Punjab Inspector General Dr. Usman Anwar has said that the police have unearthed a network of hostile intelligence agencies allegedly involved in the recent incidents of blasphemy across the country. Addressing a press conference in Lahore today, the Punjab police chief said over 300 people were interrogated during the probe while 180 were arrested on the basis of evidence. He asserted that no innocent person would be implicated for the sake of number scoring, adding that the perpetrators of the recent incidents Incidents of blasphemy in Sargoda and Faisalabad had also been arrested. Sargoda ke DPO sahab ne aur RPO sahab ne teamen banayi aur us team ne sabse pehla kam ye kiya ke malum kiya ke is sipare kahan chape. Ye sipare jahan chapte hain uske saath unhone malum karna shuru kiya ke ye sipare kahan kahan bikte hain. Agar aapko piche tasavir nazar aa rahi hongi ke inhone kis tarah logon ko engage kiya aur ye malum kiya ke in siparon ki sale kahan par hoti hai. और वहां से ये वीडियोस हासिल की जिसमें पता चलता था कि जो लोग वहां से वो सिपारे लेके निकले और फिर उसके बाद दूसरे वकूए के बाद वहां से सिपारा लेके निकले और यूं 2500 की फोर्स जो पूरे पंजाब में सफेद कपड़ों में लगाई गई थी उन्होंने मालूम कर लिया कि ये लोग कौन हैं और उनको गिरफ्तार किया और उनको गिरफ्तार करने के बाद आरपीओ साहब ने इसकी साइबर evaluation ki to pata chala ki ek hostile intelligence agency se inke links milte hain lihaza shayad aapko yaad ho humne pehle din kaha tha ki in cheezon ke taane baane kisi aur jagah ja ke milenge aur kisi aur ki wajah se ye ho raha hoga musalmanon ka musalmanon ko yahan pe misihi bhaiyon se ladne ki saazish ki jayegi aur ye cheez hame pata chali iske baad dr abid sahab aur usman gundar sahab aur unki team badastur qaim rahi apni investigation pe और अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह हमने वो शख्स जिसकी वो लिखाई है और वहाँ जहाँ पे ये लिखा गया और वो जहाँ पे ये बेहरमति की गई उन तीनों लोगों को भी गिरफ्तार कर लिया है यूँ सरगोदा के वो दोनों परपेट्रेटर्स और फैसलाबाद यानी जड़ावाला के तीनों हमने गिरफ्तार कर लिए हैं ये उन दोनों मसीही भाइयों के अलावा है On 16th of August, a violent mob of hundreds ransacked and torched nearly two dozen churches and attacked the residences of members of the Christian community and the office of the local assistant commissioner in Jarawala. The Islamabad High Court will announce its decision on PTI Chairman Imran Khan's plea to suspend his three-year jail term in the Tosha Khana case at 11 a.m. tomorrow. The court reserved its verdict after the Election Commission of Pakistan's council finished presenting arguments today. Imran Khan was convicted on 5th of August for concealing details of state gifts, leading to a three-year jail term and a five-year disqualification from general elections. He appealed the conviction in the High Court and also challenged the decision in the Supreme Court to send the case back to the trial court. Last Last week, the Supreme Court had acknowledged procedural defects in Imran's conviction but had opted to wait for the Islamabad High Court's decision on his plea. The court's observations had drawn the ear of the Pakistan Bar Council, which said that there should be no interference in matters pending before the subordinate judiciary. Meanwhile, a special court in Islamabad, recently established to hear cases filed under the Official Secrets Act, extended the physical remand of PTI Vice Chairman Shah Mahmood Qureshi for another two days in the Cypher case. The former Foreign Minister was arrested by the Federal Investigation Agency earlier this month in connection with an FIR registered on 15th of August under the Official Secrets Act against ex-Premier Imran Khan and Shah Mahmood Qureshi. Human rights lawyer Iman Mazari was re-arrested outside the Adiala jail in Rawalpindi hours after an Islamabad anti-terrorism court granted her bail in a sedition case. Confirming the arrest on X, formerly Twitter, the Islamabad police said Iman was taken into custody in a terrorism case registered at the Bada Kahu police station. The same anti-terrorism court also granted poster as bail to former lawmaker Ali Wazir in a sedition case. Both Iman and Ali were arrested following a public gathering organized by the Pashtun Tahaffus movement, where both individuals spoke out against enforced disappearances and criticized the military establishment. The charges against them included rioting, unlawful assembly, obstruction of public servants, criminal force against public servants, sedition and more. The FIRs also mentioned their alleged attempt to incite rebellion, weaken the army and promote terrorism. 
Caretaker Information Minister Murtaza Sulanki has said that the Energy Minister has chalked out recommendations to tackle the issue of inflated power bills, which have resulted in countrywide protests and would present them in the Federal Cabinet meeting tomorrow. The public has taken to the streets in large numbers since Saturday over exorbitant electricity bills on the back of a significant increase in the national average tariff. The outrage had prompted Interim Prime Minister Anwarul Haq to take notice and summon an emergency meeting for Sunday to discuss the issue. However, yesterday's meeting had remained inconclusive with the Prime Minister's office saying another round would occur today. French Conservatives applaud the government's decision to ban children from wearing the abaya in state-run schools, but the move also drew criticism and some mockery. France, which has enforced a strict ban on religious symbols in state schools since 19th century laws removed any traditional Catholic influence from public education, has struggled to update guidelines to deal with the growing Muslim minority. Education Minister Gabriel Attal said that schools are continually put under test and over the past months, breaches to secular values have increased considerably, in particular with students wearing religious attire like abayas and kameez. The head of the conservative, Les Republicains Party, Eric Ciotti, was quick to welcome the move, stressing that his group had repeatedly asked for it. But an MP for the hard-left France, Ensoumise, Clementine Outon, criticised what she called the clothes police and a move characteristic of an obsessional rejection of Muslims. The National Secretary for the Union of School Principals also welcomed the move, saying what it needed above all was clarity. He added that we are satisfied because a decision was made. We would have been equally happy if the decision had been to authorize the abaya.